Hi, good afternoon, everybody. Tom Star Stewart here ha, with Smart Business Moves. Okay, we'll, uh, we'll see if we can pick it up from there. Got Liz Trotter. Hey, Liz, how are you? I'm well. How are you guys? With her uh, fancy hat. What's the story with the hat? It's the 4th of July, Tom. What the heck? This is our 4th of July. Is that a day? Hats on yeah. 4th of July? Nobody told yeah. me. Of course, anyway, Debbie had that too. We have a super awesome special guest today with a rocket hat as well. Hey, Debbie, thank you so much for joining us today. You're welcome. Thank you for asking me. Love being here. Awesome. Well, Today, look at this. Uh, Leslie figured it out. She knew it. Yeah. I, I, yes, Leslie did. Yeah. yeah. I had good clues. Did you hear what my clues were, Debbie? What? I didn't even know. So you don't even tell them who the guest is. You just drop clues? No. Yeah. But I wanted them to figure out who you were. So <laughs> I kind of gave good clues. I said, um, let's see. First, I told them that you were like one of the, the obviously one of the biggest names in the business and your initials, uh, initials that were attached to you were TMC, not your name initials, but initials oh. that were attached to you. And then Very I good. told them that you had owned and, and operated or operated more than five companies in the amount of time that I had known you. I told them that you were, um, I finally told them you were in Texas. I told them that you, <laughs> your passions are wine, sailing, family, and business. And, you know, everybody got it. Yeah. I knew they'd guess. The wine uh, was a dead giveaway. <laughs> <laughs> For a lot of people, right? <laughs> um, <laughs> Okay, so um, we only have a couple of people live so far. Actually, I'm not, I don't have us connected. I need to connect, sorry. And Tom, I'm going to try and do this without making noise. Oh, come on. You always make noise. We all know. All right, you guys, so throw out your questions. We are only going to go as long as we get questions for today because it's the 4th of July weekend. Liz, why don't we uh, just take a, a moment to talk about what's coming up next week? Because, you know, if I don't do it now, I'll forget and it just won't happen. Okay, and sounds good. So you want to walk us through uh, who we got next week, week, Liz? Sure. Let me get us connected here. Okay. Well, I'll start off. Courtney Wise Thanks. is going to be joining us Monday. Um, she has a lot of work in helping businesses automate, and she's going to be talking about automate your freedom. And she's got uh, a lot of people I know that, that work in her program. And um, I'm looking forward to that. Who do we have Tuesday? Who's, who's this on Tuesday? He's actually on the call right now. <laughs> hey, Amy, happy fourth. Hey, uh, if you can see um, on the right hand side of your screen, Debbie, there is um, private chat and also live comments. Oh, okay. Well, it the private chats are not coming. Oh, there's the live. Okay, got it. So I had it clicked on private. So Great. everybody does. Thank That's you. why I have to tell everybody. Yeah. Yeah. And all right. She's already started. Some people are starting. Okay. So we have Ernie. Uh, so Ernie is when we were talking to him about what he wanted to present about, he said that he is a jack of all trades, master of none. And when we were talking to him the other day, I'm like, oh my gosh, it's true. He's done everything. Uh, but he's going to talk about unprecedented times requiring unprecedented customer service, because right now he wanted These to make sure in there too. Hey, Molly. These are unprecedented times. Yeah, so we can absolutely. check that off the list for today. Yep, it's gone. And then we're, oh, Greg's name is spelled wrong. We'll, we'll get that fixed, Greg. I'm sorry, Greg okay. Shepard. No H E. It's a S H E P A R D. And then his, his topic is two is better than one using a second company to capture cost conscious cu customers, which is hard to say, but I love this topic. He is so smart. He opened another company and he competes with himself. So when a customer says, ah, that price is out of 
you know, just crazy. He's like, well, I could give you a referral to this other company. <laughs> he's gonna, he's gonna talk to us about how that works. The lower point is good, but it's a lower price point. You'll like it. Yeah, yeah. And then the guest on it. Thursday is my daughter. Her name is Shara. That's actually her middle name on there. Her last name is Riedel, and we'll get that on there. And top ten sales strategies from top salesperson. And I got her numbers today that I'm going to give to Tom. Last year, she did. She closed sales on over forty million dollars. So I think you guys will find that she has some valuable insights. Forty for million, us. like four zero million. Four zero million. Wow. Yeah, forty million dollars. So, um, yeah, she's got some some good stuff for us there. And then we have a secret guest next week again for On Spot. All right. So, hey, guys, lots of people on here already. Tom, let's get started. We already have, I have a couple questions that people who couldn't be here sent me too. But I know I see that we have Leslie. If you guys have questions, pop them up here because we are going to close it down early for the holiday. We're not going to make Mrs. Sardone over here work on the holiday if we don't have to. <laughs> All right. I got to start that glass of wine soon. I have to get my glass of wine in my hand in just a little bit. And now it's not two o'clock here. So full disclosure. <laughs> oh, oh it isn't? where are you? Oh, that's right. It's late over there. Yeah. Yeah. I'm in Texas. Five. So it's four o'clock. It'll be five o'clock here by the time we end this. So I'm good. <laughs> You'll be good. <laughs> All right. Are you going to pop up our first one for us, Tom? Let's see. I think she's asking about swag. For clients, swag networking, I like, where do you purchase from? Okay. That's a hard one. Yeah. Uh, Leslie, is that a question you? for us? Yeah. yeah. Who wants to go first? Okay. Well, I uh, use. Um, bang, you're. I right. use. You're up with uh, I use you uh, printing. I use you printing. I use discountmugs.com. I also use a few people local, depending on their price points. So those are a couple of really great sources. What's your favorite swag, Debbie? Uh, any kind of a Yeti cup, because people are saving those. So oh, somebody gave that to me as a vendor. Uh, as a, a, a gift because I do business with them over uh, the Valentine's day. And they gave me a Yeti cup with their logo on it. That's not going in the trash, like most of the cheap cups. Yeah, so no. anything that, you know, people would value enough, anything, you know, you would keep because we get all kinds of swag that were like, Oh, that was nice. And we throw it away or it goes in a drawer, but a Yeti cup goes by the pool. It's, it's fabulous. Excellent. You ready, Liz? Uh, let me write it down the right order so we don't mess up again, Tom. But yes, I, I will go on. I don't, you know, I don't need your list. <laughs> yeah, right. You're going, you're going to <laughs> okay. time, Liz. You ready? Yeah, I'm ready. Uh, okay, so I also like discount mugs. Um, also, I use four imprint. I don't have favorite swag, but I am cheaper than debbie is yeti cups are pricey i do kind of like that idea though of giving them something that they're not going to get rid of um I, one of the things that i'm really not a fan of is stuff that has my name printed on it which i know goes against the idea of swag but i like it when people want it because they think it's a cool thing to keep and i trust that they're going to remember that i gave it to them so if i am going to print on it i'm going to print it somewhere where it's not not like look at i'm giving you this marketing thing and i'm asking you to market for me but i'm pretending like it's a gift i try not to do that so um i have never given away anything as nice as a yeti for um networking or uh, maybe for employees that's it Debbie, there's my proof that I don't go over. Now let's see how Tom. Very does. good. Right there. So well, let me follow. Let me follow up. That type of gift, because of the price point, would be something like a, a local realtor who's already referred us ten clients this year. 
So yeah, the price point has to match who you're giving it to. The, the amount of money they pay you. Yeah. <laughs> the amount of money we make off of them. <laughs> yeah. Big money, big gift. That makes sense to me. We get a lot of swag from, um, you know, Vistaprint. We get some stuff from them. There's another company. I think it's called Market. Uh, M-A-R-K dash I-T. Can't swear to that. In terms of what we do, we tend to go high volume, low price point type stuff, ink pens, uh, grocery bags, uh, cheap sunglasses with your, your name on it. Your, your name has to be on it. And if not, we don't even count that as swag, you know, post-it notes, stuff like that. Um, we go after business to business type accounts, stuff that we call residential property management groups, uh, real estate companies, things like that. And we like to drop food off. Uh, donuts are one of our favorite things. And we get one really crappy donut and we put it in the bottom of the box and it's got our name on it. And it sets around in the break room for a long time. <laughs> do you really do that, Tom? Or did you just hear about that from Derek? No, Derek heard about that from us. That was ours. Oh, really? We started, I love that. that so funny. We started that when we were in the temporary labor business and we carried it over to Resumercial. That's very that's a very common practice in the temporary labor business. Drop it off in the break room with like a licorice filled donut in there. And that one donut stays there in the, in the box for a week. Because people don't want to throw it away, but <laughs> yeah. All right, good. We did good for Leslie. She said we did excellent. Yeah, Very that's good. probably because she's remember she's drinking. So yeah. <laughs> okay, okay, Liz, you are up next. Okay. Definitely the first last time. Yeah. All right. You ready? Yep, I'm ready. Okay, for scheduling, um, we use for the different companies, we use lots of different programs. Currently, we use, um, we've used Castle Quick, Made Central, and Made Easy. And um, I, you know, I hate to do this because, but you asked the question. <laughs> so I am going to do a little bit of a pitch. Definitely, I have to say that um, Made Central is hands down best software I know of. I know of lots of them because I work with a lot of people that use different softwares, um, but Made Central is my favorite. It's pricey, but it's it's a good software. Hmm. Sorry, Tom. No worries. I, I'm not gonna go on forever about it. Paula, thank you very much for the question. Much appreciated. Um, <laughs> yeah. Um, Basically, I work on a team that that, that has built and in, in, in sells Made Central. So full disclosure, I can't be uh, uh, unbiased on this. And um, yeah, it's, from a price point standpoint, it's an expensive piece of software. But we argue that uh, you'll for for a lot of companies, you'll have more money in the bank at the end of the month than you did in the beginning of the month because of that software. Um, versus other software options you can have. So we like to say that it's uh, a very good value for a lot of companies. It uh, is a very integrated product. It's got a ton of functionality. Um, takes a while to implement and it's a, it's a big commitment, but for the right companies, it's a really good fit. Thank you for uh, giving me the opportunity to say that. You ready, Debbie? Sure, absolutely. Okay, so I used um, Service CEO, which was the desktop version, for probably close to twenty years. I was one of the one of the original users, and I loaded it on a floppy from a floppy disk, and we used that for many many years. My staff loved it, and then a few years ago, they stopped supporting it, and I had to move to the cloud. You know, it's always a painful transition. So um, about three years ago, we did lots of research. We ended up with Service Autopilot. It my my staff picked it. They interviewed all the different software programs that were available at that time. And um, they chose uh, Service Autopilot. And then we integrate with Simple Growth for all of our email automation. So we've been using that now, maybe not quite three years, but they love it. I haven't used it, but but they love it. 
So good reports. Good, and that's important to us that the reporting is uh, robust. And so that's what works for us. Excellent. Hey, Tom, I know we have some other questions on here um, and I want to make sure we get to them all. But I have this one that I think links up here really quickly. Um, somebody asked me, what are the other softwares and apps that you use other than scheduling? Like, do you use QuickBooks, Ring Central, Asana, Google Drive? What are the other things? I, and Debbie had just mentioned that she uses Simple Growth. So I thought this might be a good time to bring that up. Okay. Yeah? Yeah, we can do that. Okay. It's coming. Is that it? Okay. Okay. I get to go first this time because you went first last time. Yeah. See how easy this is? Yep. That'd be reason we're having a discussion. This seems like it should be really easy, right? Well, we're gonna, we're, before we're done, we're going to prove to you that for some, it's not. No, I'm keeping. Okay. I'm keeping track here. For every week, we fight about who has to go first. <laughs> but we're not doing it today. It's no, it's no fun if we're not fighting. <laughs> okay. Um, for starters, we use QuickBooks Online. Um, regardless of what scheduling software you're using, I think everybody needs some type of accounting software. Um, we use SingGrid. We use um, Twilio. And that handles everything from email to um, voice messages to, to, to text. All of that, by the way, integrates in with, 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 with Made Central. Um, in production, that's that's basically it. It all looks like it's it's one complete you know, software package through Made Central, but all of that is 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 integrated into it. Um, we use a lot of the Office 365 suite type stuff just for like desktop management software. You're familiar with Word, Excel, things like that. SharePoint's part of that for for document share. Okay, Debbie, you're next. Okay, well, we use QuickBooks Online. We also have Blue Skies, which is a service and a platform, and they do our outside recruiting for job candidates. So we use Blue Skies for that. And then they also have a portal, which helps you to manage the candidates. We have just uh, are in the stages of adding Pipe Hire, which is one of our CBF members that developed a, uh, a software program for managing all of your job candidates and your employees after the recruiting is done by somebody else. So this brings them in, it scores their job application. So you can pick from your eight, nine and 10 scores before you bother to waste time on calling them or interviewing them. And then it manages everything from their 90 days uh, hiring process and all that. So Pipe Hire, and then, of course, we use constant contact for any of the non-automated emails that we get from Simple Growth. And Simple Growth is that other integration with service uh, pilot. Um, also, Launch 27, we have their integration on our website for booking online and getting quotes online. And that's about it that I can remember. Debbie, you've been hanging around with Tom too long. That's See? okay. See? She's that's a guy. The guests can do that. <laughs> oh, did I miss? Color. I was I was looking at my list and I wasn't watching the clock. Sorry. If Oops. if two words Debbie. come out of my mouth after thing comes up, Liz is on me. But you're good, Debbie. No worries. Any excuse works for the guest. All right. So one <laughs> bonus going last is that you have a chance to think about all of the stuff. So I'm going to kind of go through mine quickly. Um, we use um, Google Drive for all of our stuff to integrate everything. We use Asana for project management. We use QuickBooks. We use Responsibid for bidding. We use Twilio. Um, we just signed up with Simple Growth because of um, Debbie's event, one of the events that she just recently had. It was awesome. So we signed up for that. Um, we're not using quality driven now, but I'm still going to say that we do because it, um, we have in the past and it's, um, super awesome product. Um, survey monkey, uh, we use, we use RoboForm for keeping track of our passwords. We use team viewer because I'm not in the office. A lot of times we use people matter. 
for managing recruiting and that type of stuff. And we use Cloud Art, cloud art and fun stuff for the employees. Holidays. Wow, Debbie, perfect. You, Debbie, did you notice yeah. that she started speaking before I started the clock? Oh, well then. That's how I'll she never go early. late. She, uh, <laughs> no. she goes early. I go early. And here I was, I was waiting for it to start like an obedient student <laughs> to talk. Uh -oh. Okay. okay. I feel bad. <laughs> Heather's got a question for us. Okay. And her question is, what are some of the things you did after reaching a million dollars to continue growing? Since Liz finished, that means you go next, Debbie. You ready? Uh, yes. Uh, after I reached a million dollars, I had a mindset for many, many years that that was kind of the threshold. So I really just expected my team to maintain because I, I had this mindset that it was kind of like the ceiling. And uh, I started cleaning for a reason because I didn't I needed a project. So I started that. I got heavily involved in ARCSI. I became the president and so i just went and did other things and eventually i bought speed cleaning and um basically i became a 100 percent absentee business owner then just a few years ago i thought well maybe i could be an absentee owner and keep growing the business so now we do 1.8 million we ended last year at 1.8 million we should still be able to hit our two million dollar target and it we do it. I do it as a hand, hands free business owner. I do not work in the office at all. I didn't even know they were closed today for 4th of July. So um, I started cleaning for a reason, bought speed cleaning, and got involved with Arxy. That's what I do with my time when I hit a million. Very good. And, and I'm super impressed that you guys are still going to meet your $2 million goal, even going through COVID. So it'll I mean, be a stretch. Really, that's kind of. It'll be a stretch, yeah, but, but we think we think we can still hit it. So we had our highest first time clean week last week in the history of our company, where we, we booked more initial cleans for our company than we've ever done in one single week. So we have hope. Everyone else needs to have hope. <laughs> All right. So everybody on the call right now, um, double double cross your fingers and set send extra awesome vibes that Debbie meets that two million dollar goal. She wins, we all win. Yeah, that's all right. right. You you ready, Liz? I'm ready. Okay. All right. I'm waiting for my time. Okay, so um, let's see. So I did not do a lot to tell you the truth to grow. I was kind of like, oh, I'm just gonna. I got complacent and just sort of stepped out a little bit and then i started meeting other people and doing other things and connecting with other people and that was like more energizing and doing more things and so like like debbie i hooked up with arcsi and i know tom did as well well he did it way early but um uh, i hooked up with tom i hooked up with david kaiser is actually one of the first people that reached out to me and said hey liz i'd like to work with you a little bit and so i just started working with other people that reached out to me and um started doing other fun stuff and now i reach out to other people that try and do fun stuff and and grow everybody's businesses because like what i just said one if one wins we all win there we go We had a million dollars a long time ago. Um, she was probably 20 years ago. Um, one thing about growing, the bigger you are, the more customers you have, the more customers you have to lose. It's harder to go to 2 million and beyond than it is hitting the first million. So um, early on, we started doing what we called residential work, still cleaning space that people live, sleep, ate, eat and bathe in but like apartment communities, uh, military housing, uh, property management groups, uh, vacation rentals, Airbnb, stuff like that. So we diversified it a lot more in, in business to business. Um, started uh, about five years ago, developing our software to allow us to run multiple branches. We're cleaning homes in several different uh, geographic areas, all in the spirit of house cleaning. It's 
hard to get a lot in a minute, isn't it? I know it. I know it. And I did forget to say, because I didn't, I like you, we hit the million dollar mark about 20 years ago, but I also started doing business consulting and training. I started out part-time like Liz, and now I do it full-time. So, um, and, and what this proves for everybody who's asking this question is once an entrepreneur, always an entrepreneur, just because you hit your goal doesn't mean for most of us that we're going to go sit on a, on a beach somewhere and sip my ties, even though I always said I would. No, we go and sign <laughs> ourselves up for more work. <laughs> so... <laughs> If we were on the Mai Tai program, we wouldn't be here at the moment, would we? That's probably and, it. And people are always asking, oh, why do you work so much? And I don't think they believe us when we say, because we like it. <laughs> I want to. It's fun. Love you know, it. I, I, I'm love hoping it. that people really yeah, get that message that yeah. we, we, we love to work. It's exciting. Used to Yusuf was here earlier in the week. I think it was Wednesday. And he said yeah. he worked like 60 hours a week. And it was like, you know, and he did it because he wanted to do it. And he enjoyed it. Yeah. Yeah. And it didn't even feel like work. And, you know, I'm sitting here thinking 60 hours a week, that, that's not that much. <laughs> yeah, that's a half. That's, that's part time for you, Tom. Yeah, that's not much. <laughs> Yeah. And I think I he's the biggest, I'm pretty sure he's the biggest company I know, and he still works 50, 60 hours a week. So um, it's amazing. All right. What do we got from Ernie here? What has been and, the biggest challenge to your company during COVID-19, both cleaning companies and consulting businesses? Hmm. Hmm. Okay. Okay, so I finished. That means Debbie's up this time, right? Yep. Um, so I will say the biggest challenge is to have worked so hard in 2019, hit our big goal of 1.8 million, and my staff did that because my goal was 1.75 for them, and they said, no, it's 1.8. And then to watch almost overnight, watch our sales drop in less than a month by 38%. Uh, that was the most painful experience, knowing that I spend 14 grand a month on marketing and two months, that was a big waste. And we couldn't cancel the contracts because those were contracts. We could turn off Google ads and Facebook ads, but, you know, spending 14 grand on a month and the phone not ringing and people not working. And that was really a nightmare. Um, but we've set new goals. We pivoted like buffaloes. And we did all kinds of training with our staff and we're almost, we're only about 5% below where we should be. And in terms of the consulting business, it's actually grown my consulting business. It didn't hurt it, it grew it, which is sad, but it's true. All right, before I go on to my question, I just have to point out, Tom, that if you go last, that doesn't mean Debbie's first. That means I'm first because now it's gonna be Debbie, Liz, and then Tom, you're gonna be last again. So okay. this is why we fight every single time because Liz keeps well, a record, but Tom doesn't listen. Liz, I was testing you and you didn't say anything. <laughs> I did, but I'm on a, I'm on a lag. <laughs> okay. Oh, you, want me right. to go next? you want me to go next? No, I'm happy to go. I was going to have to go first. Now I get to go second. <laughs> okay, go. All right. So... Um, biggest challenge for our company has been trying to walk the line between, you know, making everybody feel good and safe, but still staying busy and keeping business going. And, you know, it hasn't always been easy. Uh, and, and not only um, keeping people safe, but then the money aspect, too. You know, when unemployment came in and said, hey, how about you don't work and we'll give you an extra six hundred dollars a week. So. And then people really do feel unsafe. So just all of the balancing of this communication between the customers, the employees, uh, managing how people are going to get paid, making sure that people get paid fairly, they feel safe, just that whole thing. That has been our biggest challenge. And then for co coaching, we're kind of in the same boat as Debbie. We're doing more coaching. Um, people need more help now, not less help. And again, that is that. Oh, 
for us, we um, had to make the decision or we made the decision to uh, close up shop for, for several weeks. And that was tough going through that exercise and then starting things back up again. And, you know, we're located primarily in the Southeast and, you know, COVID is worse now than it was when we were closed. So at the moment, you know, the biggest challenges are every day getting the count as to who's tested positive, both on the client side, as well as the employee side, and who's been exposed to what, and who's been exposed to what. And um, it, uh, it's, it's just becoming the expectation every day that uh, we have to deal with that and figure out how to manage that. From a revenue standpoint, you know, across the board, we're 90% or better in terms of booked revenue, and I'm not even sure how that happened, but uh, just managing the disease itself is the hard part. Yeah. Yeah. Close, Tom, but you did it. Good job. I had to like pick up the pace up there at the end. Yeah. You did it though. All right. What is the key of success in residential cleaning? Marlo's berating herself right now. She can't believe she didn't guess that Debbie was the mystery guest. Marlo, I can't believe you didn't oh, guess it either. On, Marlo. You're you're better than that. Next you'll get next week's Marlo. Okay, Liz, you want to go first this time? Are you sure, Tom? Is it my turn? Yeah, it's your turn. You go ahead. <laughs> All right. Um, what is the key of success in residential cleaning? Ooh, gosh. Should have been more serious instead of joking around. Um, I guess the key to success, I would say, is first and foremost, pay attention to your numbers. Uh, because anybody can get a business up to a certain level without paying attention to their numbers and just sort of, you can sort of fall into a certain level of success. But if you don't start knowing where your profit margin is, what your payroll percent to revenue is, what your expenses are, what your actual income coming into your business is, you can run into some pretty significant problems before you even know it. Because we cash flow so well in this business, a lot of times people think they have money when really they don't. A lot of the answer depends on what stage you're in in terms of, you know, are you a small company you're starting out? Are you a larger company? As a rule though, the, the business is fairly straightforward. You need homes to clean. You need people to clean them. You need to uh, get them in the right, uh, the right ratios. You need to understand your numbers. You need to understand what your cost of goods sold is. You need to understand what your client turnover rate is, your employee turnover rate. Um, a lot of it, if we had to boil it down to one key, it's just execution. We heard from Yusuf Wednesday and I thought it was excellent. You know, he's kind of like a five million dollar plus business, over a hundred people working for him, and they're not doing anything particularly flashy. It's just the blocking and tackling, just taking care of the of of the basics day in and day out, being consistent, having the discipline to be consistent, doing that day in and day out. Excellent. It says boring, little tiny incremental details that add up to massive results. So I would say 100% of high achievers know their numbers, period. Not most of them, 100% of high achievers know their numbers. But once you know what the numbers are, then of course, like Tom said, you have to take action. So I wrote two things down. As the owner of a business, the key to success is number one, building a team. You have to be able to build a team, which means you got to be able to attract the right people and keep the right people. And then number two, you have to constantly, what I call mine the gap, mine the gap. So you have to know where you are, that's the numbers. You have to know where you want to be, that's mm -hmm. the goal. And your job is to constantly work on that gap of where you are and where you want to be. So that 1.8 million from last year, we want to be at 2 million, 20,000 was my staff. My job as the leader is to mine that gap and build the team. Very good. I love that, Debbie. I love that term. That was perfect timing. 
And I love I love that message too. I love that idea of mind the gap, mind the gap. That's so great. And keeping everything moving forward. That's awesome. I love that. And also I did want to say real quick, I just want to jump on what you said, Tom, about Yusuf. You know, he hit pretty heavily on this idea of consistency. So I really want to just make sure that everybody heard that if you weren't on that call. Remember, over $5 million, y'all. He's saying that consistency matters. I should have said that, too. <laughs> I'm mad that I didn't. Good job, Tom. Okay. Well, that's okay, Liz. That's that's why I'm here. Thank you. Thank you for letting me off the hook. Man. I appreciate that. that. Was, he, he, he was inspirational, though. There's so many people that are looking for the magic bullet and what's the next hot thing that's going to get me there and you know he had he knew what he was about and he knew what his business was about and mm -hmm. he didn't go chasing that shiny thing or going after the squirrel he just kept doing his thing right and, you know, double um, down so basically what we call that is everybody else is looking for the shiny easy tactics to get to the top and he is just focused on the boring simple basics and doing them all the time every day over and over again and th that's who wins big yep yeah and mm -hmm. he's got his ten thousand hours in by now because he's been doing that same stuff over and over again so he's a master and, and his job description is, is is rather narrow but one of the things he does is he interviews all new hires, everybody that, that gets hired in his company, he still interviews every one of them. And I just think that's awesome. Yeah, that kind of blew us all away. All right, let's 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 get back here. We got a lot okay. of questions here. I digress. Hey, Sarah. Okay. So, oh, Debbie, Sarah Mitchell's here. I know she loves you to bits. So she's just saying, hey, she's just tuning in. <laughs> Great to see you, Sarah. Okay. Um, Liz, who would you like to go first now? <laughs> Whose turn is it? Well, you went first last. When you time. go last, I go first. No, okay. when I go, when you go last, I go first. <laughs> okay. Well, who went last last time? Okay. Debbie went last last time. That means I go. I'm going. Right. See how hard this is. <laughs> Yes, we pay uh, vacation. Uh, we get like six vacation days a year if you've been with the company for six months. Christmas bonuses. Um, we do a lot of different things for Christmas, and some of it is is is, is cash involved. Um, so yes. Can I have the rest of this time on a, on account and maybe use it for another question, Liz? Yeah. Okay. Yes, you can, but you might have to donate it to Debbie because she's the guest. She gets more time. I'd be delighted. I'm just telling you. Okay. You ready, Debbie? Yeah. Um, we, of course, also offer vacation. It takes you three years in my company to get two weeks of paid vacation. You do start out with one uh, week. And... Uh, we do have some other benefits. We actually do add retirement. And then we have what we call phantom shares in the company. It's not real legal shares, but they're phantom shares. So that someday when I do sell my business, 40% uh, of what I sell my business for will be divided up by the months that my employees have been with my company as long as they've been with us three years or more. So some people who've been there 15, 20 years cleaning will get $30,000, $40,000. Others have been there, you know, 40 months will get a certain amount. So we have phantom shares, retirement, paid vacation, and we don't do Christmas bonuses, but we do anniversary and longevity bonuses. Oops. Very good. I love that idea, Debbie, from you a long time ago. That's a genius idea. It is. That's Thank awesome. you. I I got the idea from Jeff Campbell, so I can't take credit for it. He's the one that gave me the idea. Oh, well, we'll keep passing good, good, good blessings to Jeff then, because it was a great idea. Um, my turn. Yep. Uh, so, yes, we do pay vacation. Um, we start out with a week, and then you earn an additional day every, every year. Um, but you also can earn additional paid days off by meeting certain criteria throughout the year. So you can earn up to four weeks total. 
Um, we do not do bonuses for Christmas, not cash bonuses. We did at one point in time and asked me off Facebook Live why we decided not to do that and read a book called Drive by Daniel Pink. And you won't also do bonuses for Christmas anymore either. Uh, we do do other types of bonuses, though. And we do other rewards. At Christmas time, instead of doing a bonus, we do a party and we do um, gifts. And then we do um, end of year awards. Very good. I was easy. Love it. Sam? Oh, Sean Day is he uses Sotellus. Debbie, you use Sotellus too, don't you? Yes. And I love it. Yeah. So but what that's is, not a question. What is Sotellus? It is a review management software. It's, oh, yeah. uh, you can send a link to your customers, ask them to review you. But the unique aspects of this is they can choose to do the review as a video review. And then it publishes publicly to your Facebook page. So video obviously is pretty compelling. Yeah, no kidding. And it's easy on a little phone. Super easy. Yep. Yep. Samantha has a question. And Debbie, you're up next. So this is fitting. If you were going to start another related business right now, what would it be? Not sure what a related business might be. I yeah, guess. yeah, to be related, there's all sorts of stuff. Right. So here's what I'm going to say to that. Um, the, the key to that question is in the word related. If you have 30 years of expertise over here, don't go over here and start something you have no expertise in. That's just my recommendation. Been there, done that, failed. So if you are going to start another business, I recommend that it is related and you are able to play off the expertise you've been developing. So as an example, I bought a wine business a few years ago and lost $250,000 because that's not the business I have expertise in. <laughs> but all my other businesses are very closely related. So my expertise, my contacts, my vocabulary all play off my related businesses. So I, I manufacture eco-friendly cleaning products because I bought speed cleaning. I have a consulting business. I only work with the residential cleaning field. Um, I started a nonprofit, which is a business. It is only in the cleaning space. <laughs> you are good. You know I, I do compete with myself. <laughs> yeah, competitive people. <laughs> All right. I know I'm up. All right. If I was going to start another one, I would do window cleaning. <laughs> Just because I know window cleaning companies that make a lot of money uh, with very little labor, which I really like that idea. Um, so we do windows in our business, but I think it would be nice to just have a window cleaning company. My second thing that I would do would be a handyman business because my husband has some related experience. It would be able to... Um, I feel like it would be really, um, can't think of the word I want right now, synergistic with um, uh, my cleaning business. And I'd be able to refer back and forth. But after listening to Chad and Diana yesterday, I'm like, huh, kind of like the idea of this pest control business because you have two <laughs> people making how much freaking money? A lot. <laughs> A lot. A technician can make one technician can generate a quarter of a million a year in revenue in pest control. Wow, that's fabulous! One person, yeah, that's fabulous. I wish that was true in residential cleaning. That would be a game changer. It would be. Everything I currently do has something to do with house cleaning. You know, we're in the house cleaning business through Castle Keepers. Uh, we licensed the software through Made Central distributorship, and now a lot of uh, online training through Modern Cleaning, uh, Cleaning Business Today, um, you know, the, the coaching that I do with with with, with Liz and, and and Derek. 
I'm not sure if there's anything out there left to really do without going into other home services. And that really isn't an interest to me. If I ever did anything else, and then this would probably be the only thing I was doing, and I don't think that I'd ever get to this point, and maybe it would be trying to be a fishing guide. I thought that would always be fun, um, but I'm not to that point yet. Don't see that happening for a while. Can I use your extra few seconds to share one business that I'm actually in the process of developing? Sure. It's clean yeah. related. It'll be quick. So um, I am now a part owner, co-owner in the Gift of Clean. Ernie Hartung is in that, as is Chuck uh, Willis. And I really believe in that. I actually registered the domain MadeServiceGiftCards.com about 12 or more years ago. And I always had this vision to bring like 1-800-Flowers, but 1-800-MADE-Service to the industry. And I was just too distracted with more important things. So it's like, I'm not chasing another sparkly object, but it was always a dream and a vision. So I'm now a small part owner in that venture. We actually had a one of our, like a board meeting this morning about, you know, how to grow it. So launching MADE-ServiceCards.com or the gift of clean so that people can buy a cleaning through a gift card for their aunt in New Jersey jersey when they live in texas yeah i'm familiar with i'm familiar with the the organization they're they're they're, they're quality people i know ernie has been working with them now for for a good while and it's just hitting the tipping point if you guys are able to reach critical mass it, it, it could be huge it could be good so i'm excited about it and that's that again related to the cleaning field yeah, that's good. I'm glad you shared, Debbie. That's really good. Thank you. <sighs> All right. D did we have another? So we had a, a quick question from Brian there. Does anyone okay. use ClickUp or Slack? So I went last. That means you go next, Liz? Yep. Okay. You ready? Yep. It's going to be hard to get fit this all in. No. No, I don't. <laughs> I am just now looking at ClickUp, um, and I don't, I can't, my brain can't do Slack. Okay. Okay. That means now that I am up. You are, but we did it wrong because mm -hmm. Debbie didn't really go last last time. <laughs> uh, okay. Whatever. No to ClickUp. We use Slack in made central we use we do use that to talk internally with with the made central staff we do not use either on the house cleaning side and my answer to that question is no to click up yes to slack when we worked more closely with the va we no longer have that va so we're not using slack i would like to use it with my team to communicate uh, we don't. We were only using it with the VA. And I did forget the technology we also use on our website is one of those chat uh, bots or whatever you want to call it, where we have a VA that manages the chat feature on our website. That was another technology we, we use and I forgot about. So we don't, um, you guys, we don't use uh, so you know Brian none of us use ClickUp but Courtney wisely is going to be on on Monday and she uses ClickUp and she's going to be talking pretty pretty extensively about it I think so if you're interested in more more about ClickUp oh this next question I think is just for Debbie because I can't imagine yeah. how it would relate to you or me because <laughs> there's only one person here with an office in Texas so we'll just throw this in yeah, yeah. So for the very first time, you know, I've been holding field trips at my office for more than a decade now. We did our field trip at our office virtually and we did it last Friday. And I was like, I wonder how this is going to turn out. I think we were able to have 34 people there, which normally we have to charge a lot and only allow 14 or 15. And so I would say the future is very bright. We wanted to test this out first within our CBF private community, but the future is very bright that we will do more field trips virtually. It, it I, I was like, is this gonna work? It really worked well. So yes, in the future. 
Okay. Thank you. We for have asking. been doing um, in our MMA. That's a great question. In our MMA groups, we have been doing every Thursday, we've been doing a virtual office visit. So between all of the different members, and it's been awesome. But I, the only problem is I'm getting way too many notes now. <sighs> way too many things to change, do, fix. Bye. Mm. Okay. I'm trying okay. to reach something without everybody seeing I'm wearing shorts, so I won't reach it. <laughs> <laughs> you think I'm just dressed in a suit? <laughs> we, didn't, we didn't see your shorts. Well, you're not wearing a backwards sweater like I am, Debbie. That's awesome. That's awesome. I'm like, I gotta always remember. Don't stand up. <laughs> I work yeah, from I'm home, so home. you know. <laughs> somebody, somebody rang my doorbell yesterday, a workman, and I forgot. You know, I'm like dressed in a suit on the top. And I'm wearing these shorts. I answered the door. I'm sure he thought, what is wrong with this woman? Anyway. You know, when you're well, working from home, wearing... the rules are different with COVID, you know? It's all... Yes. Well understood. Sometimes it's pajamas on the bottom and suit on the top. <laughs> yep. I would show you my pajamas right now, Debbie, but I'm trying to, to be good. Since you're not showing your shorts, I won't show my pajamas. <laughs> yeah, okay. no. <laughs> uh, we're uh, getting close to top of the hour. We can probably squeeze in one more question. Paul yeah. is asking about recommending video training programs in Spanish. Who's up, Liz? I'm all confused. I'm completely lost. What's your website? I, you can put me up first if you want because my answer is so easy. I know. Okay. I think I was first left. I said no, but I'll go again. Okay. Um, I don't really know about any video training programs in Spanish, uh, so I, I I've got no great recommendations for this. Uh, what I can tell you is whatever. Oh, that was a weird one. Whatever training program that you're using, um, if you're using it in English or in Spanish, just don't rely 100% on the training program. You still have to have some um, human contact to move people forward and to get that long-term memory engaged. Video does not engage long-term memory. It engages short-term memory. So uh, that would be the only thing I'm going to say, English or Spanish. And I'm sure Debbie will be able to help us here much better than I can. Okay. Well, I can help you with that. Oh, I go ahead, Debbie. Do you want me to go? Sure. I, I can help you with that because we're just play, making up our own rules. Uh, Jeff Campbell and I rewrote the book Speed Cleaning, which was the traditional book for the homeowner. And we rewrote that book. Uh, just a few years ago, it's called Speed Cleaning for the Pros. And I got my name on this. And so we had the book transcribed to Spanish. And then we had the DVD, which I have the English version because, oh no, that's the Spanish version. We have the Spanish version of the speed cleaning for the pros. And it, this is basically the train the cleaner version. And so I agree with Liz, you know, with kinesthetic learning, it's not good enough to just put people in front of a video. This is just one of three things you need to do when you train your staff. So books and DVD in Spanish, but you also need somebody hands-on to show them. And uh, so written, visual, and then hands-on. A little hey, promo good. and a little plug for speed cleaning. We got the Spanish. So proud sure. of that. <laughs> yeah. I, actually, so many people need it too. So I'm super glad that you had that. It was a lot of work, but we we paid a lot of money to have it done right. So, yeah. Yay. Thanks. Hey, Tom, do you want to go? Why don't you start talking, Tom? Why'd you mute yourself? I knew that. Is it I was testing yeah. to see if you were paying attention. Speed Clean is an awesome program. Um, I remember Thank having you. the VHS tape, uh, the very first one that Jeff did a whole bunch Me of too. years ago. Um, I think Sharon Tinberg has some uh, training videos that are in Spanish as well. Um, ISSA has has a lot of training material as well, and a, a lot of their material is, is, is in Spanish also. Tom, you did really well considering that you spoke for the first 30 seconds silently. 
was good. <laughs> were, you, were you reading my lips? Could you tell what I was saying is something really profound and it was like frustrating that you were missing? I, I, could. I, I was so, so despondent about the whole thing. Yeah. I, I'm, I'm sorry All right. So Tom, I think we're out of time and, and we don't have any questions popping up. So this is a, a good time to be out of time. Um, if you haven't subscribed to Cleaning Business Today, now more than ever, you're going to want to do that because we're going to have some, some pretty cool announcements to make on Monday, some new stuff that we're doing with CBT that's going to make it uh, even more valuable to you by subscribing. It doesn't cost you anything. Uh, email, first name, last name. You get our newsletter every week. It's got really cool information. If you don't know about our downloads page for um, Smart Business Moves, I'll drop the link here for all effort to. And it's got all the downloads that uh, and, and other articles that we've been following up here over the last, uh, last few months, I guess. Wow, time flies when you're having fun, right? Time flies when you're in an unprecedented global pandemic. Twice in one call, Tom. Good job. All right. Um, so, Debbie, what are you, can you tell everybody a little bit about what you're doing right now? So, I know you had talked about you have an event scheduled for, for September, but maybe we do. We have a private event scheduled for September for Cleaning Business Fundamentals members. But if you just go to debbiesardone.com, and uh, get on my email list, you'll find out when we have our public trainings. Like last weekend, we did a two day, uh, actually, I'm sorry, we did a one day training event, train the trainer. So most people are training the cleaner, right? They're training the person who does the cleaning, but nobody's training the trainer and they don't really know how to train effectively. So we held that, we have quite a few events. Of course, we have our big event in March next year in Dallas. And uh, so just go get on my email list and then cleaning for a reason. I'm still serving on the board of directors. It's now called ISSA charities, but um, please get involved with that organization. It will lift your business up. Uh, the, the, you will, your staff will love it to be a part of that. And so I'm still very actively involved in what's now called ISSA charities and cleaning for a reason is, is my, my heart pro program, my heart project. So, Oh, and find me on Facebook book and join my Facebook group and you'll get more tips and stuff. So thank you for letting me say that. Oh. Yeah. And Tom, you need to put on her link, debbiesardone.com link on too, because she has more things in there. Oh, but the, the maidcoach.com works. It's, it all goes the same place. Yeah. That's fine. It, it kind of redirected me. Oh, okay. Well, I, it all and I same? guess I should have said, I guess I should have said speed cleaning. We have plenty of cleaning supplies and we have now added disinfectant and other PPE, which we never had before. So we have that as well. Do you have lots of availability for your PPE, Debbie? We do. We have plenty of disinfectants now. We did have a hard time getting it. We would get a, a big pallet in and then we'd run out in like a week, but we're not having problems anymore. So we have masks, plenty of gloves, disposable gloves, and plenty of disinfectant. And our okay. disinfectants, I think, like 64 cents to make a gallon of disinfectant. So we have plenty. Speedcleaning.com. Hey. All right. Uh, you guys have a safe 4th of July weekend. Um, remember, COVID's still floating around out there, so don't uh, – let your guard down, uh, social distance, do all the necessary precautions, get your 4th of July hats out. I got to find mine or get one or something. I'm missing out on that. Um, Debbie, thank you so much for, for, for being part of our uh, discussion today. You are you were awesome. So generous. We, we, we knew that it would be great Thank to have you. But Okay, Debbie, it's one time. I am honored, and I'm an advertiser on Cleaning Business today, so go there, read the great articles that they provide. So, And thank you, Liz. Always love working with you. You're a doll. You're Thanks, too, guys. Debbie. See you Monday. Thanks, everybody. Bye. 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 Happy 4th.